tractor wheels of interest. And don't you just love it when things go wrong all at the wrong time. I've just put the XK into winter storage. Uh, that was my sort of spare car, if you like. Um, if a spare car is such a thing, a uh, bit of a luxury, I know. Um, but it's a spare car nonetheless. And as soon as it's gone into storage, I get a problem with my daily. And my daily is another Jag. Uh, basically, a Jaguar XF 3 litre diesel S version, so the 275 horsepower version. I've had it about coming up for four years. It's done 150,000 miles. And yeah, it's a great car, absolutely fantastic car. Um, can't really fault it, it has its issues. It's a Jaguar at the end of the day, lots of electrical issues. You probably know that if you're into Jaguars, especially modern ones. Loads of electrical issues that they can have uh, with uh, water ingress and all sorts of other issues in, inside. There's a module for every module, I think, on this car. Same on the XK, actually, but this is slightly newer. This is a 2012 version. Uh, it's got the one with the sort of, uh, not the frog eye sort of headlights. It's got the more slanty headlights on it. Um, I prefer this one, personally. It's uh, a lovely car, but I get in it yesterday and up on the dash pops a ABS fault light. And in addition to that, I think emergency handbrake assist, uh, dynamic stability control, and uh, adaptive something or other, I can't remember what, but all of these lights came on and got warning, warning messages. Um, and what I'd normally do is plug my little code reader in. I've got a little code reader with, uh, which is a Bluetooth unit, goes into the OBD port on the car, and I can look at it on my phone, and it tells me the fault. Unfortunately, my smartphone that it is linked to is broken at the minute and is away for repair. So I'm using a much older phone, which doesn't support the uh, the software that I've got for the OBD reader, so I'm without a reader. So I took it to my friends at Stevenage Prestige, who kindly uh, stuck their reader on it and diagnosed front right ABS sensor or speed sensor on the front wheel. And uh, it's uh, apparently he tells me it's an easy fix. And because I need to get the car running, because I've got to go to work at the end of this week and all of next week and I need the car, I don't really want to be driving it up and down the motorway without ABS or adaptive uh, stability control and all the other bits and pieces that it affects. So I've had to uh, trawl around and see if I can get a sensor. And luckily, I did not know that this company was in Stevenage. Um, I am not that far from Stevenage. So and as I was in Stevenage anyway, to, uh, to get the code read, um, I went to a company called British Parts. Now, I did Google British parts a while back, um, or I looked up some parts for the Jaguar um, and my Land Rover as well a while back, and British parts came up, and I never realised that they were in Stevenage, so effectively local to me, or relatively local. And um, Luke at Stevenage Prestige basically said, go to British parts, they'll have it. They'll have the part you want. They'll have everything. They've got the lot. So I trawled off down to British Parts in Stevenage, just around the corner from Stevenage Prestige, and sure enough, he has them in stock, and I purchased them at £25 each. I've got two. I've got one for the other side because it's the front ABS sensor, which has got a lead coming from the front wheel back into the body of the car, and there's a fair chance that the one on the left-hand side will go at some point because it's constantly flexing with up and down movement of the suspension and obviously the steering. And reading online on the forums, uh, it appears that the front sensors go more than the rear sensors because of this constant flexing and st while the steering and, and suspension movement. And so I've got two. And they had them in stock. Brilliant. They've got parts for Jaguar, parts for Land Rover. Um, not a big place. They do mail order and everything else. But look up British Parts. I'm not endorsing it um, as such. It's, it's not, I'm not paid to be saying this. It's just handy and local, I needed the bits, uh, wanted to do it as soon as possible, and I've got them, and I'm gonna crack on and get it fitted. Now Luke tells me that it is a pretty straightforward job. It's a case of unplug it on the bodywork, where the plugs bolts to the bodywork, and uh, unclip it at the wheel and knock the sensor out, or pull the sensor out. I've never done it. 
This is completely cold. I've got the wheel off already. You don't want to see jacking up the car because that's pretty boring. Got the wheel off, got it turned so I can get to the back of the sensor or back of the wheel so I can see the sensor. Let's see if we can get it out. Okay, so I've got the front wheel off. I've got it turned to the right so that um, we can get easily to the back of the wheel hub. Uh, if I turned it left, then it would be a case of the brake caliper would be in the way. So it's easy access to the front of the um, wheel hub. And this is the, the sensor wire. And the little sensor is there with a metal clip. Comes off the back of the wheel hub and over follows the brake line basically over the top and round the corner and ends up going behind the bodywork just here. So we've got to pull this body perk off, this uh, wheel arch line. I've got to pull that off so we can get to the plug behind. And hopefully we can unplug the sensor at the back of the wheel and it should pretty much pop out. So we just eased a little clip off the back. A new clip comes in the bag. And it's a case of literally what he was saying, literally pull it out of the uh, little hole. Give it a little bit of, there we go, and she's away, just like that. And uh, we'll give it a little bit of uh, a blowout with an airline, just make sure the rubbish is out of it. And um, we'll get the other end unclipped. So the cable comes over the brake line and it's uh, clips to the bodywork here and it goes behind this wheel arch liner. There's a plastic screw which goes in there and then down at the bottom, down here, there is a 10mm uh, bolt which we need to get out and then hopefully we can peel back the, the liner so we can get access to the plug and socket. There's also two uh, plastic screws down here as well which I think I'm going to take out and uh, hopefully get the liner out a bit better. Now one of these was out the other week because I took the plastic seals off the outside and uh, gave the seals a bit of a dosing of rust preventer for the winter. Did that a few weeks ago, didn't put it on camera. I might do that again one another time because these XFs, uh, especially at the back of the seals, pretty much like most cars actually, the seals tend to, tend to rot. Um, there we go, so that's that out. And hopefully now we should be able to peel this back and get access to it. <laughs> And what do you know, when you look inside stuff, you find all sorts of weird and wonderful things. <laughs> Luke, you said this was easy. I think the hardest part's getting the trim off. So actually there's two 10 mil screws. There's the one there, which is the one, the first one I got, which you can see, sort of like, sort of goes under the wheel arch a little bit. And then in a recessed uh, pocket, I suppose you call it, is another one, another 10 mil. So that stops you from getting uh, the whole thing completely off. But uh, yeah, what do you know? When you actually look inside the wheel arch of a Jaguar XF, you realize that this, uh, let me just position the camera again, but you realize how important this wheel arch liner is. I'll get some light on it. Look at all the stuff that's in there. There's all sorts. There's a washer bottle there, didn't know that. Haven't done much with the XF because I usually tend let the guys do it at Stevenage. So I'm learning stuff all the time as I go along here. <laughs> yeah, uh, looms, washer bottle, looks like a main, I don't know, that looks like a main positive, but I wouldn't say it was. There's an earth cable. Uh, there's the main cable coming down from the back of the battery, the back of the car where the battery is. That's all there, which is all, oh, so now I know. And if anybody else doesn't know and has got one of these, now you know too. And this one here, I think, is the ABS sensor plug. It's all very clean. This uh, this wheel arch liner seems to do a pretty good job of keeping everything clean, so that's good. So just unplug it there. I've plugged it at the wheel hub, and it should just unclip. So I've got it unclipped from the body plug. I'm just going to unclip the uh, from the brake line and. It should then just pop out 
Right. So, and there she comes. So it's it's like a two pin plug. If you look in there, and then on the the actual one you want to unplug, the bit you want to pull, you've actually got the little tab which you push down on the edge there, pulls it out of the plug, push the tab down, pull the plug out. It came out very easily. It's not horribly uh, corroded or messed up at all. It's not even covered in mud or dirt really. It's, uh, it's very clean and it came out very easily. And then the other end is just like a little square sensor pickup, which is, uh, uh, looks like there is a little key on the collar there, there's a little uh, little peg which must go in a slot so that you get this the right way around, I would imagine. I'm gonna look in the back in a moment and have a look, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. And there's your little metal clip which came off. So that's the old one. Chuck that out of the way. For so the moment. new part that I've got is uh, from British Parts. It's Autotech, that's the maker. Uh, it's just described as a sensor, so it doesn't give you much idea of what it's for on the description. Uh, I gave them my, seri my registration number and they came out with C2D47189 as the part number. I believe there are different ones, so you've got to be careful. Um, always pays to get your registration number in and that should get you pretty much where you need to be in terms of parts. Um, so the one I've got looks pretty much similar to the old one. That's the part that I've got and it looks like exactly what came off. So there's your square sensor. It's got a little peg for it to go in the right place when it goes back in. And then it's got the two pin socket uh, with the little key, little uh, locking tab and the, the required little rubber mounts that it needs. Right, so I think this can only go in one way. And by looking at it, I think that the little keyway for the peg is downwards. So what I'm gonna do is put a little bit of Vaseline around the O-ring. There's a little O-ring to try and help it from getting any water ingress. But good idea not to get anything near the sensor. And if you're using copper slip, don't, because the sensor will be sensitive to the conductivity of the copper. Uh, Vaseline's pretty inert stuff and it's only going around the o-ring anyway, so be aware of that and Just by looking at that. I think we are the right way around Tip, and in she goes. And it's as simple as that. And it's important to get the clip the right way up, otherwise it would never go on properly. And so far I've got that the wrong way up. So pay attention when you take it apart, so you know it's going back the same way. And it's a split clip, so literally, literally get that in the right place and that's it and now that can't pop out and we're in now it's just a case of follow the brake lines clip there harness into the relevant space clips. They're all pretty much where they need to be by the look of it, which is useful. And then there's one which goes round uh, through, I should say, a body clip, which I've left the old body clip in because it's not broken or anything, just unclipped it. And then that the, the new harness does come with a new body clip. Um, so that you've got any worries there, but um, you might just need to move these a little bit in case they are not quite where you want them to be. But that looks okay to me. There we go. There, now it's just a case of plug, plugging in the 
uh, sensor into the bodywork. Uh, ABS, emergency handbrake, adaptive dynamics and DSC not available. Now he did say that plug the new sensor in and it should all clear, uh, but maybe we'll have to drive the car a few, uh, few feet, few meters, just for the uh, the software to reset so it knows it's got a new sensor and it can recalculate. So I'm going to try that and see if it uh, works. But my ABS is working, so clearly there was a fault with that sensor because the ABS fault has now gone from the dashboard and I've cleared the emergency brake as well. So let's get driving, see if we can clear it. Okay, well, uh, just driving it up and down the drive, not very fast, but it's not cleared the two remaining faults. In fact, to tell a lie, it's actually cleared one of the faults, which I had left, which is the DSC, the D Dynamic Stability Control, is now gone, as you can see. So maybe, it stopped flashing between the two, maybe, if I switch off and switch on again, Perhaps it will work. I might clear it on the dash first. Still got a warning triangle in the top right hand corner. I'll turn off the car. Maybe leave it 30 seconds or so. Let's see what happens now. So far, so good. Let's just drive it. Looks like we have a result. So the moral of that story is, if you fit the sensor and you've still got faults, don't panic. Good idea to drive the car, to reset the ABS, reset all the sensors, get the computer to sort itself out so that it knows where it's going and what it's doing and it looks like we have success so that's a bit of a relief guys uh, yeah I'm glad I've got that fixed um, I was expecting to go in the garage wait three weeks for them to be able to be free to do it for me because I'm working at the end of this week and then for the next three weeks I'm away working so I needed the car really uh, I've got the Land Rover as my spare with the XK going in storage. Um, not ideal, but I've got the Land Rover if necessary, but uh, I'd rather have this. It's much more comfortable than a Land Rover and it's nowhere near as thirsty. Um, so I'm, I'm pleased I've got that done. And uh, I've got a problem with the Land Rover as well because the battery's gone on the Land Rover. So I've got to get a new battery for that. Uh, I've put a spare one on for the moment, which is one of the tractor batteries that I use. So yeah, it's all happening, isn't it? You know, um, you get one thing go wrong and then three or four things happen after that and uh, it all happens at once and you just think, why can't these things just happen gradually? But that said, this is a really reliable car, all said and done. Um, when I bought it, I had some repairs to do with it because the guy was selling it because he couldn't be bothered. Um, that was back in 2021. Uh, I think I've had an engine crank sensor on it. Um, I think I've had, I've put more brakes on it than I care to remember. It goes through back brakes like nothing else. Uh, discs and pads. Uh, it's just recently had a new caliper on it. It's had rear wishbone joints, front wishbone joints. Um, uh, they go quite regularly. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it has its fair wear and tear, but uh, it is all wear and tear. I mean, it's, you know, it, the cars, they break down. It, it, you will never get a 100% reliable car. You go on the Facebook forums, people moan about Jaguar and they moan about Land Rover. It's the same with every car. They're all of them insane. If you like Jaguars, buy a Jaguar. If you don't like them, go and enjoy what you want to drive. Um, if it's a BMW, it's a BMW. If it's a Merc, it's a Merc. If it's a Mercedes, it's a Mercedes. If it's a Vauxhall, oh, well, good luck to you. But uh, <laughs> I'm no fan of Vauxhalls. <laughs> but anyway, um, I digress. Uh, it's a lovely car, Jaguar XF 2012, three litre diesel. Got some serious poke, serious comfort, and some serious handling. It's a lovely car. I hope this uh, video has been of help to anybody with one of these cars that's got a similar fault and doesn't know what to do with it. 
the first thing you must do is read the code because there was four faults came up on the screen on the dashboard um, it was quite likely the ABS because that was the first one that came up uh, so it was a bit of a guess on my part but I got the code read he confirmed which one it was because remember you've got four to choose from and you don't want to be spending 200 quid on uh, on four sensors uh, for it only needs to be one I mean I did get two because I think the other one will go the other way if one's gone already on one side good chance the other one's going to go not far behind it fairly simple and easy job um, but yeah get the codes read so you know exactly what you're dealing with and then hopefully you can get it fixed and I hope these videos helped you do that if you uh, like to keep up with what we do with our mechanical adventures please like and subscribe to the channel it costs you nothing put a like on the video if you enjoyed the video and any other videos that are in our playlists we've got quite a few up there really great to have you along and if I've managed to help somebody through uh, a difficult day with having a fault on their car um, then I'm happy take care and uh, I'll catch you on the next one bye for now <laughs>